राम 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 भगवान மறுபடியும் இட்ஸ் நோ ஸ்மால் பிரேஸ் தட் வி வெர் ஏபிள் டு சிங் டுகெதர் ரைட் இன் த ஷ்ரைன் ஆஃப் பகவான் ஹிஸ் பவர்ஃபுல் நாம் லெட் அஸ் செலிப்ரேட் this blessing and pray for continuation of this without the world having to go through a situation like this now we have been <clears throat> going through some scenes some glimpses of bhagwan's satsang at sanadhi street house now today we shall see once again it was 1980 shri agaram jayaraman had come to sanadhi street house and bhagwan had kept somebody had come and given four mangoes Bhagwan was always fond of mangoes so he as soon as some people brought it he had some of them cut and distributed but he kept some in a corner soon agaram jayaraman came and then immediately bhagwan said you cut these mangoes also let's distribute so agaram jayaraman took a banana leaf and after washing the mangoes he cut them into pieces and he and bhagwan shared and that is when bhagwan said these mangoes help this beggar very much again what he really meant by that we do not know sometimes you know there are some strange scenes it seems one agram jayaraman had just filled up his stomach on the way from chennai to tiruvannamalai but as soon as he came to bhagwan sanadhi street house bhagwan kept four chapatis in front of him and said Jai Rama, Jai Rama, please take this. Jai Rama didn't know what to say because it just, his tummy was too full already. And not one or two or three, but four chapatis with sabji. 
But Bhagavan said, insisted, Jai Rama, this beggar cannot take it, but you can take it, Jai Rama. Take it, Jai Rama. And then Jai Rama says, by the grace of Bhagavan, he was able to stomach it. And then Bhagavan said, Jai Rama, you have done father's work, Jai Rama. You have helped this beggar. You have done father's work. This beggar thanks you, Jai Rama. Thank you for doing father's work. Just imagine, just gobbling up four chapatis amounts to doing father's work. Such strange scenes are often seen in the diary of Jai Raman. Now, Dandapani Sastrigal had come to see Bhagavan. Dandapani Sastrigal, Bhagavan used to say, in the beginning, none of the Brahmins, after seeing Bhagavan's dirty, untoned clothes, and he's not bathing at all, and added to all that, smoking, they were put off, and none of them used to come and prostrate before him. They could not accept him. Dandabani Sastri was the first Sastri, first Brahmin, who came straight to Bhagwan and prostrated on the floor. And what was more, he was coming very often to see Bhagwan. Bhagwan also indulged him. And that day, when Dandavani Shastri came, Bhagwan found some grapes. Immediately he gave it to Shastrigal and said, you wash that and you have it. It was the habit of Shastri to give somebody something and then eat it, especially when they were present. So he was hesitant, despite Bhagwan saying it, immediately Bhagwan said, okay, you take most of it and give us a little, little. Bhagwan was also careful not to break the, the Vedic rules observed by Brahmins. After that, Bhagwan started to smoke and Dandavani Shastrigal wanted to narrate some of his experiences with Bhagwan to those present. So Agaram Jairaman told Bhagwan that Dhanabhani Shatrigar wanted to narrate some of his experiences to the people present. Bhagwan nodded with a smile and then Dhanabhani Shatrigar started. He said, when he was present, once two foreigners had come to have darshan of Bhagwan. And they were pestering, literally insisting, pestering Bhagwan to give them guidance. They said they wanted to settle down in India for their spiritual progress, but they had no idea where to settle down. They wanted Bhagwan to guide them. Bhagwan said, Oh, this beggar also doesn't know what is good for you. You ask some great people, they would be able to tell you. But still they persisted. And then Bhagwan said, Okay, there is Ramanashram here in Tiruvannamalai, Sri Aurobindo Ashram there in Pondicherry. You can try some of these ashrams. You may find it fitting. Somehow they were not convinced, they said, Swami, we want you to mention to us specifically where we could sit down. We want a specific reply from you, a specific blessing from you, so that we would know for sure this is where we have to stay for their 
for our spiritual progress. Then Bhagwan looked at them straight and said, Oh, in which case you people can go to Calcutta, go to Ramakrishna Ashram there and settle down. That would be very good for your progress. As soon as he said it, the two foreigners got up, prostrated before him, and then with folded hands said, Swami, one week before we had come, we had been in Calcutta, and there, after seeing Ramakrishna Ashram there, we wanted to settle down there. In fact, we wrote to the ashram people that we would like to stay there for our spiritual progress. We wrote and gave them. We liked the place, we wanted to settle down there. But then we wanted to come to you and make sure that this was the right place for us. We wanted your approval for that song. And you have given exactly that. And then, with great appreciation, adoration, and humility, the foreigners prostrated before him and left. And then Dandavani Shastra went on to narrate another one. He said, his brother passed away so it became his responsibility to look after his children also. Some children were already studying with his, in his son-in-law's place in Tiruvannamali. His brother had a daughter. Nandabani Shastral did not know where to leave her. That little girl had to study in school and she had to be settled nicely for her studies. But then, at that moment, his son-in-law was not in a position to keep anybody in his house. So he was very hesitant and in confusion as to where to settle her down. He rushed to Bhagwan. And then he said, look, my niece has to be settled in some house in Tiruvannamali itself so that she can pursue her studies. And then he mentioned one or two people, like the job typist, Kittu Ayer, another person. Somehow Bhagwan did not answer him at all. He kept quiet and finally he said, You don't leave your little daughter, your brother's daughter, with any family in Tiruvannamalai. Don't worry, my father will settle this issue nicely, fittingly. He blessed him and the very next day, a teacher from a nearby village, a village near Tiruvannamalai, he was already working as a teacher in the school, and he came to see Dandavani Shastrigal. Dandavani Shastrigal was the prohit, the acharya for the teacher's family. And so, when Dandavani mentioned this problem, the teacher from the village was more than willing to accommodate his niece, Dandavani Shastrigal's niece, for her studies in the school. So the Nirvana Shastri said, when we leave an issue to Bhagwan, whatever he does is perfect. Everything settles down nicely. Had it been something like what I thought with Kittu Ayer or someone, it would have been very different. Later on I could see it from the consequences from the succession of events that happened. And then he went on to give the narration of another incident. 
This time he said, Kittu Ayer of Thiruvannamalai. He was living with his brother in Thiruvannamalai. On one day, his brother had to go to Chennai and he fell sick there. So Kittu Ayer was living in Thiruvannamalai at the time he got a telegram from somebody from Europe. He wrote, Kittu Ayer had nursed a secret desire to leave his brother and settle down in Europe. He wrote, This telegram said that he should come to Erode immediately on some work. So he just took it to Bhagwan and showed him. Bhagwan, being Bhagwan, no detail could ever escape his very attentive eye. So he said, Oh, this beggar doesn't understand this telegram. Someone is asking Kittuaya to come to Eero, probably for settling down. But this baby doesn't understand why. And then he kept passing it on to those people around. Do you understand what this means? Do you understand what this means? They all simply said that somebody wants Kittuaya to come to Eero. Then Bhagwan said, this beggar feels that Kittu Ayya should not leave Thiruvannamala. There is no need for him to go to Erod. The very next day was the day Kittu Ayya's brother fell sick in Chennai, in Madras. So Kittu Ayer had to rush to Madras to look after his brother there and after that his brother passed away. Kittu Ayer knew instantly why Bhagwan said that he should stay only in Thiruvannamalai. He was also very happy that he could be with his brother when he fell sick he could look after his brother very well and he was with him when the brother passed away. But Bhagwan had to play a leela before he decided it for him. And then Dandavani Sathrigar said, gave one more narration He said that uh, once it happened, some people had come to see Bhagwan in Samnadi Street House. At the time, The Tandamani Sastrigal was also present, but he was in great confusion. Bhagwan played a leela. Bhagwan asked him, Do you remember the name of your niece whom you are very fond of? Tandapandi Desika, he thought and thought and thought. Suddenly the name slipped out. He could not remember the name of his niece he was so fond of. Then Bhagwan said, he started to ask the names of some of his relatives, his brother's name, brother's children's name, one after the other, brother's wife's name. 
and after several such names, he said, now you tell me, can you remember the name of your niece? But much as he tried, Shastrigal could not recall the name of his niece. What a strange thing. How can anybody forget the name? Probably he had some problem. It happens that when we get old, the blood circulation to the brain becomes less. It could result in sudden loss of memory. Then Bhagwan called him near. He merely touched Dandabani Shastriyul's hand then said, Shastriyul, please tell me the name of your niece. And suddenly it came. He remembered in a flash, oh, it is Vijaya. A touch from Bhagwan's hand, the memory returned. So you see, these give us glimpses of how he conducted his spiritual ministry in those days. Not many people used to come to him. It was mostly reading articles, reading poems. But many, many people, the higher officials used to come at that time, from judiciary and the police department, and the politicians also. And the higher officials from Delhi also used to visit Bhagwan. Much of it, his conversation, have been lost to us. But those people, the simple, humble people who visited him at that time, they could report something of what he said. Those are the glimpses we have. Bhagwan's leelas are continuing, even though he is not in the body. We could still feel his touch. You just have to come to the ashram. When the corona period is gone, you could go near and touch the feet of Bhagwan. And if you see him live, you will also be able to feel the touch of his feet. When you touch his feet, you could very well feel that you are touching his flesh and blood feet. Sometimes it's some electrical shock, sometimes it feels so soft that you get the feeling you are touching his flesh and blood feet. Bhagavan often said, do not treat the deities in the temple sanctum sanctorium as mere statues. They are so alive. They live, they breathe and live and grant your prayers. Do not ever treat any of the deities in any of the temples as just stone images. And here Bhagavan about his own image, he said, do not think that this statue is the statue of this Veda. This is no statue. This is verily my father himself. And those of you who come near and make your prayer here will be attended to. My father will help your prayer. Even the expressions on the face of this muti will change if you observe closely depending upon the environment. 
Now to this Bhagwan we shall submit today's prayers. Bhagwan, every day, both morning and evening, we are submitting our prayer compulsively now. And only you can come to our rescue. Please free the world from the dreadful clutches of this virus and its variants. Please bring back normalcy to the world again. Let the children go to school, the students to their colleges and the elders to the offices, to the companies. We beg you again and again, more than the disease, deadlier than the disease is the fear, the panic in the hearts of people. Only you can remove them. Kindly uproot this panic and other negative thoughts. And Bhagwan, stop the rapid spread of the disease. Enter those medicines and make them work. And what is more, please Bhagwan, make it available to all the people who need it badly. And all those great people who are struggling day and night, laboring in order to save others' lives, please give them protection and a lift to our economy. Above all, again and again, we keep pleading with you for constant remembrance of your name. You have said no single nama goes waste. Every nama does its work. Every nama people utter not only helps the individuals, but also the people around. It helps the world and it helps this beggar's work, his father's work. So know that when you chant the name, you are helping Bhagwan's father's work. It is not for nothing that we are mere, merely singing the name with lips. No matter how we pronounce, how we sing, every one of them helps Bhagwan's work. A little return for all that he does. And what's more, every Nama is Nami himself. He enters. He is immediately present in us with all his vibrations and he knows our thoughts and feelings and prayers. And Bhagwan, give us the right attitude to life, the attitude of being good instruments in your hands and that with gratitude. And bless us to see only your grace in everything and in everyone. Jai Yogi Ram Sri